ever since my trans egg cracked, I realized there was a lot of moments leading up to that. So here's going to be a summary of most of that. There's been a bundle of music that got me thinking about my gender experience, albeit indirectly at first. Before I recognized my vocal gender dysphoria, I noticed that I had a more fun time singing songs with AMAB vocalists. To mention some names, I'd usually sing Fall Out Boy, AJR, and 21 Pilots songs over Lady Gaga, Kesha, and Rihanna's tunes. In terms of specific songs, Game Over from Falling in Reverse was one. Polarized from 21 Pilots was another. And a recent listen to Shy Away, also from 21 Pilots, was actually what got me to write this script. I honestly didn't know where to put this section, so it's smacked into the middle. There weren't really a lot of full games that I'd say were egg games for me, though I can isolate a few characters that have me in the present going, yep, egg moment. One example was the fact that I had attachment to Vivian from Paper Mario with a Thousand Year Door ever since I laid eyes on her, and that was before she was confirmed trans in the English remake. I also found myself gravitating towards the human characters in Undertale and Deltarune. <laughs> oh god, I remember that part of my life. And also Lamb from Cult of the Lamb. Uh, as a side note, I think Lamb is the closest to a problematic fave in this section, but I digress. When it comes to Pokemon, the easiest Pokemon that trans the fans' gender seems to be Sylveon followed by Gardevoir. Might just be a me thing, oh well, but some other Pokemon that got me thinking trans and be gay would be the Dratini line, the Tookapi line, and Pikachu. Especially after that one anime episode with Pikachu. <coughs> yes, I am including anime here, bite me. But anyways, the strongest contender for a cartoon scene that doubled his egg moment for me would be... Drumroll, please? Garnet offering to fuse the Peridot in Steve Universe. Before the SU fans get too happy, I want to say that this was practically the only moment in the show that really demonstrated it being a gay trademark show. Yes, even more so than the wedding. But to get back to the scene I was referring to, I can reliably say that their interaction in this scene is the closest I have gotten to seeing an honest talk about being such learning your LGBT plus in a TV show. And to be honest, this interaction is the only good thing that keeps me thinking about that show. There is also rain whispers from the Owl House, and oh boy, the gay pride really does go hard in the Owl House. But anyways, I think the only anime-related notes I can add to the section are Princess Knight and Ranma 1.5. And, and that's based on what I've absorbed through Cultural Osmosis. Not because I've watched either of those cartoons. Whoops. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Bye!